Ghosts ye, cure my life, source of well, no special strange thing, forget it, when I live, don't mean yes. <laughs> what if the hypothetical scenario that I was creeping into Meryl Garbus's private life was good? <laughs> Where am I going with this was God thing? Right? <laughs> What if Meryl Garvis' toenail was <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. Anyway, alright, so this new this new two new house album is called I Can Feel You Creep. Ain't in my private life, man. And I gotta be honest with you, bro, this album is pretty fucking bad. I didn't really like it, man. I, I can't I can't lie, man. I, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling this album, man. Because there there are four things. There's four things that I think this album's trying to do. Four things that to me when I was listening to it, I was like, okay, this this album is shooting for these four things. It's trying to be catchy, it's trying to give off this socio-political message through its lyrics it's also trying to be introspective and personal and it's also trying to be sonically a bit of an experiment there are moments that feel a little bit kind of glitchy and a bit you know off the fringe a little bit just weird and odd that's also introspective to Meryl Garbus as a person as well it's trying to blend all four of those things I think which is cool you know I mean why, why would that not be appealing if that was done well a catchy album that's experimental that has a good message behind it and is introspective to the you know the artist like that's that's a recipe for success how could that not work well it doesn't work when you, you fuck it up. I think the prime example of them fucking all this up uh, is on the song Colonizer. This track, because uh, here's the thing, this beat, this instrumental on the song Colonizer, I actually like, for the most part. Like, on my first listen to this album, like, Colonizer was the first track to where the beat actually like, stopped me in my childhood. I was like, oh shit, this is actually really cool. Because the first half of the track has this really cool, glitchy, electronic, like, weird, disjointed, like, experimental thing going on. It was sounded really weird and oddball and different, and it, like, switched up and they introduced these, like, Asian guitars and they gave it a whole different feel. I was like, this is just fucking cool. This is creative. I I'm liking this instrument. But then in the second half of the song, Meryl comes in with this, like, hook, this refrain. I use my white weapons voice to help serve me. Talking about how, I, I'm not really too sure what the, what the point is she's trying to make. She just makes this statement on how she is white and she talks about African culture, what she has done in her previous album as Tunyard, you know, and I guess she's, say, she's saying that people have hated on her for doing that, called her a cultural appropriator or some shit like that. I'm not sure what the what she's adding to this statement at all, if she's adding anything. She's just kind of stating it, and it's just like, what? And she says it in this weird, like, robotic, like, kind of disjointed way that's not, like, catchy at all, and it's like, it's like, it's, like, it's trying to be, like, experimental and disjointed and weird, but then they introduce this, like, this hook and this groove, and it's trying to be, like, actually, like, a pop song that's catchy, whilst also retaining that experimentalism, and have this message, and she's trying to talk about herself, it's just like, what the fuck? It just it divulges into this unlistenable, obnoxious mess. And I think that's the biggest issue with this album. It's just a jumbled mess. The, the flow of the album is awful. The sequencing, the track-to-track -track cohesive flow of it, it's just such a jumbled disarray. There are some slow moments too, like on the song Home and Coast to Coast. These tracks are a little bit more subtle and slick, more just kind of timid, I guess. And uh, then th these tracks are like paired up to songs like fucking Hammer and Heart Attack, which are a little bit more just like wild, I guess. I'm more like up-tempo grooves and stuff. And sometimes, like, I, I think in my opinion, the only two tracks that I thought were like good and worth returning to that I thought were actually like, like, like these, this song, I'm enjoying the fuck out of this song. Like, as I was listening to it, I was actively thinking, yeah, this is enjoyable. Only two tracks were Heart Attack and Look At Your Hands. That was it. ABC123, um, pfft, no. Instrumentally, it's just so tame, I think. I just think it's really dull. And the ABC123 hook. Are you serious? What the fuck are we in? Like kindergarten? <laughs> like, no, man. It's just it's lazy. It's just such a lazy rhyme. Literally, it's the laziest rhyme you can do. <laughs> a, B, C, one, two, three. What do you think of Michael Jackson now? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, it was just like, this is just kind of shit. Like, I, I just wasn't enjoying that track. But Heart Attack, I fucking love the piano chords on Heart Attack, man. They're like, doom, doom, giving me a heart attack, da, 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 don't you lose my soul, or whatever she said. Like, that shit was tight. I, I like it in the end when it gets super triumphant. I'm like, oh, fuck, this shit's going crazy. The hook is catchy, instrumental is just grand and cinematic and epic, and overall, I just think it's a really enjoyable, fun pop tune. And look at your hands, has such a good hook. I love the hook on this track, even if it does get played maybe one or two many times. One or two many times. <laughs> one or two. Too, too many times, I guess, is what I should have said. And instrumentally, I love the bass groove on this track. It's just, it's just layered. It's fun. It's nice. But yeah, there are just so many songs that are obnoxious as fuck, or just, or just bland and uneventful. Like Home is just dull. Like there's nothing remotely um, outstanding about Home. It's just sort of like a ballad type track, and it just doesn't do anything remotely captivating. It's just kind of an uneventful song. I could say the same for the song Now Is Then, which has some like kind of feminism-ish lyric. She's talking about like taking the money and running. You know, she doesn't want to be a woman if it's just. You know, I'm just I just have permission to do this. Like, I don't want to be treated like an actual human. You know, she's trying to give off this message whilst also talking about her own experiences. She's making it about herself and also trying to give off this message. And I just don't think it's executed well with this kind of like 
really disjointed poppy sound. It's like, what the fuck am I supposed to get out of this? It's just such a mess. Like, it's just so annoying. I, I, I just, it just angered me, honestly. And speaking of honestly, the, 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 <laughs> the song honesty. This track, uh, when it started, it was like, okay, this is interesting-ish. Like, it had these weird, like, vocal charts. <laughs> <laughs> this weird little like vocal chant melody and then her repetition like, honestly honestly like it started off as like this is just kind of weird it's, it's like disjointed and experimental again when it got to like the one minute point it, it was still doing this vocal chant melody it was still doing this repetition of the, it was just like this is just getting fucking irritating like, this song is just a mess it's just not it's just so unlikable i i just i just couldn't get into it man yeah i feel like a four i just didn't like it the way it all came together and it was executed it was just so fucking sloppy and um yeah i wasn't digging it so that's my thoughts on two Yars new album i can feel you creep into my private life Bye. <laughs>